Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then welcome. My name is Kelsey. I am so excited about today's video. So I got an impromptu PR box from Rose Inc. If you're not familiar with Rose Inc, it is Rosie Huntington Whiteley's brand new beauty brand. They launched a range of cosmetics as well as a couple skincare items. So I wanted to do like a full face try on today for as much as what they have at the moment. The box that they sent was stunning and it came with a bunch of these like beautiful infographic cards which are so helpful so I'm gonna be reading from them just so I have all my information correct since this is so new but I thought we could just jump into this video and I can provide you with a little bit more information and talk to you about how the products apply and where so I'm so excited so first category she launched is the skincare category there's only a couple items in this so I'm just gonna go over it real quick but I'm not gonna apply anything because I can't really tell you how skincare works off the bat so we have the skin resolution clarifying toner it's alcohol free it purifies exfoliates and brightens their salicylic acid pink clay powder mandelic lactic glycolic acid um, so there's a lot of exfoliants in this and it looks like it's almost like suspended in a solution where you need to kind of shake it up so that is the toner and they also released the radiant reveal brightening serum so it's hydrating illuminating non-comedogenic they're squalene sea fennel extract sodium hyaluronate and also a vitamin c in this product i put it on the back of my hand it's kind of like just your basic glowy serum it's a little bit tacky so it could help grab onto makeup but they're not marketing this as a primer and then lastly in the skincare category they also launched some reusable cotton pads i think these are great so they're supposed to go with the toner okay so i brought you in just a little bit just so you can see the products apply and what they look like first up i want to talk about the concealer since that is the only i guess technically base product that they launched so it's the soft light luminous hydrating concealer it's supposed to be brightening blurring and nourishing and it's also packed with skincare ingredients like squalene vitamin e fig buttercup extract sodium hyaluronate tarragum and chicory so it's supposed to hydrate lift soothe calm nourish all that good stuff i love a skincare infused makeup product it makes me feel a little bit better about what i'm putting out my skin this is the packaging of the concealer it's really cool it's in this like square packaging with a round top which makes it really easy to open i do like that it is plastic so they did send along three shades this is shade 20 30 and 60 30 definitely has a cool undertone and these two 20 and 60 are warmer undertones just so you can see the packaging has a pretty large doe foot here um i would even say it's bigger than tart shape tape and the formula looks very whipped here are some swatches for you so this is shade 20 30 and 60 you can see that 20 and 60 are actually very similar there are shades 40 and 50 in between these two here 30 has more of a cool undertone and then 20 is warmer as well as shade 60. Well, I don't think any of these concealers are going to be a perfect shade match for me so I think I'm going to go ahead and mix 30 and 60 under my eyes um, and we'll see how that blends out and then I'll do the rest of the face too. So I'm gonna just go in with 30 right here. You can see that it's very light on my skin tone, which is fine. So that's why we're going to go in and mix shade 60 in just a little bit. It does pick up a ton of product. Um, so I suggest wiping some off. I'm just gonna go here. That probably would have been a better shade match. Then I'll do a little bit in my T-zone too where I normally conceal. So Rose Inc. also launched some brushes, which is exciting. This right here is the concealer brush. It's named One. Um, so it has a little bit of like a slant to it and it's pretty densely packed. I'm gonna just go in and blend that out as I would normally with the brush. And because there's an angle, it makes it really easy to kind of just press the product into the skin. I do really like that. So a little bit of this definitely goes a very long way. As you can see, I'm probably gonna go in with my sponge just to 
spread everything out and kind of diffuse it a little bit more i have no foundation on because i kind of just wanted to see how this performs on its own but off the bat it's definitely a medium to full coverage product um so i don't think i would wear this by itself unless i'm putting it all over the face you can see look at the difference <laughs> in my skin so i'm gonna go in with my sponge actually because i don't find that the brush is able to blend like my entire face zooming you guys in a little bit more hopefully you can see my skin a tiny bit better i have a ton of like dry and flaking skin right here which is not normal for me i just applied too much spot treatment the other night uh so i'm dealing with that so it's definitely clinging to my horribly flaking skin here but i think any concealer or base product would cling to how bad my dry patches are under my eyes looks phenomenal it doesn't look heavy and maybe that has to do with the fact i went in with a sponge it kind of gives it a more natural finish um, but it doesn't look heavy at all it's definitely a little tacky like it stays tacky on the skin which for someone with dry skin i like that because it's not going to dry down and look like powdery or crusty on my face anywhere the product is where i don't have flaking dry skin it actually looks really nice it's radiant there's no glitter at all and i'm actually really enjoying that with the exception of this area so if you do have tons of like flaky or dry skin or maybe you're on tretinoin or accutane and your skin is very flaky maybe i would take that into consideration but again i think that would happen with any concealer um, whenever there's skin coming off the face something's gonna cling to it next up let's move on to cheeks so they launched this beautiful compact i hope it's not getting too washed out again it's plastic it's not like heavy and they are also refillable so you can buy the pans by themselves um, and put them in or you can buy it as a full unit if you buy the pans by themselves it is cheaper i'll list all of the prices in the description box below so you can see and i'll also link everything as well this is the shade anemone which is a true bright like almost like a poppy coral i've noticed that a lot of the tones that she released are very like red and rosy and brighter they're not very like natural nude shades which is fine because i think a punch of color is fun every now and then so this is the shade anemone i think it's really beautiful and i think this would look stunning even on like medium skin the second brush that they launched is brush number two this is what it looks like it is meant to go with the cream blush it's angled um, and it's supposed to just press into the skin just like that again i will zoom you in so you can see my cheeks so i'm just going to tap in just a couple times just like that i don't want to get too much on my brush it's definitely pigmented and i'm just gonna pat that into the skin yeah there's a lot of pigment to this which is fine i prefer it be pigmented and use a lighter hand than have no pigment at all It applied quite evenly on my cheeks with the brush. I will say this isn't my favorite brush I've ever used for cream products. It definitely feels like a little spiky almost on the skin. Like it's not the softest brush. I think if you want to pick a brush up, the concealer brush is a nicer brush. Like it feels better on the skin. I really think you can get this effect with any brush on the market or even your fingers if you want more of a punch cream blushes i love applying with my fingers and just going in with a sponge i think it gives a little bit more of a seamless and natural finish and it eliminates the problem of having streaks in your makeup too but this didn't apply streaky or patchy i think it looks really nice i will note that like the concealer it does have a slightly tacky finish it's not very like slippy or emollient like the concealer it's tacky but you can feel it gripping to your skin if that makes sense um but i think it looks really nice i definitely toned it down a bit but i like that it's pigmented so it will be able to work on a range of skin tones as for consistency of this blush it's like a thicker balmier blush uh with a little bit of like a tack to it i think that's something to note 
there's so many different formulas of cream blushes on the market and i know if you are a cream blush or cream product lover some people are very tried and true to certain formulas this is definitely thicker when you touch it and there's like a, a tack to it um, again i think it will help grip to the skin but if you are very oily i'm not sure if you're going to be obsessed with this formula since it doesn't dry down to a powder or anything like that but someone with normal or dry skin i think would prefer this i just want to see how this layers up if i were to use my fingers <sighs> now i'm looking very rosy i actually really like this shade though i think it's very brightening and fun okay so if you do want to layer the color up it definitely layers without picking up underneath and it looks very natural on the skin like it doesn't look like you have makeup on which is kind of nice it's a very like effortless no makeup makeup look reading off my card again but they launched the brow renew enriched eyebrow shaping gel it's supposed to volumize groom and condition again it has pea sprout squalene vitamin e and vitamin b5 in this formula they launched five shades so they launched one clear and then four tones that range from like kind of like a light brown all the way to a really dark brown i noticed that the applicator is different on the clear versus on the tinted brow gel formula so let me show you that as you can see the top one is the clear brow gel and it's kind of like a rounded applicator and then on the bottom that is brow shade number three which is kind of like right in the middle of their range they sent me three and four um, I think this would be good for more precise application versus the clear. You can kind of just put it anywhere. I already filled my brows in with pencil because that's just how I normally do my brows. So I'm going to go in with the brow fill number three to see how much it can add to it and if it kind of like holds my brow hairs up. Okay, I will say off the bat, I don't like an applicator that is this large unless you have very large brows. I find it to be messy. I like an applicator that's more similar to like a Glossier Boy Brow. It's a little bit smaller and can get into smaller areas. As you can see, it's kind of like even bigger than the tail end of my brow. So I think this is one unless you have fluffy brows, you definitely need to be careful with. But the formula is nice. I'm already getting it all over the place. I think the camera's pulling way warmer than actual real life because my brows are looking moderately orange on camera and I promise they aren't in real life. And I'm just gonna apply over here. So I think the formula is nice. It's not like flaking or clumping at all. Um, but again, this type of applicator is usually quite messy for me to use personally. So I think I'll be reaching for the clear brow gel over the tinted ones just because I can be a little more thoughtless with the clear one over the tinted one. So it's not holding my brow hairs up 100% the way that I like. So I'm going to go in with the clear to see if we can kind of just fluff them up a little bit. There's definitely a hold to them and they're not feeling like crunchy. I'm going to see if it also can tame some of this here. Ooh. I may like the clear brow gel over my hair, to be honest, to kind of just get some of the flyaways away. Okay, so this is what the brows look like. This one's looking way darker than this one. So the last product that was included in the launch is the Lip Sculpt Clean Moisturizing Pigmented Lipstick. These are matte lip crayons that are supposed to be long wearing, but also very hydrating at the same time. I feel like Rosie is known for her lips. So that is something that I'm very excited to see in this launch. So here we have the shade Still, which is almost like a true red. And then this is the shade Quartz, which is kind of like a rosy pink undertone. So this is more pink and this one's a little bit more of a true red. Because this is a crayon shaped formula, you're supposed to be able to line and fill in your lips with this formula. So I'm going to go in and do that now. This is much brighter than I thought, but I definitely think you can kind of blot these out and cheer them out. So this is the shade Quartz. It is like a true vibrant pink. It's matte, 
but it doesn't feel heavy on the lips. It's almost like an air matte formula where you know it's matte, you know it's not gonna move around, but it doesn't feel like a thick, heavy matte like say a MAC matte lipstick. It's not a thick or like cakey matte if that makes sense. It's like a good light medium consistency. You know that it's there, but it doesn't feel drying. I always suggest wearing a lip balm under any type of matte lip products, especially if you tend to suffer from dry lips. So it glided on very nicely. It didn't cling to any dry skin on my lips, which I have a ton of right now. Everything's just dry, I'm not sure why. Um, but it's very even, there's no patchiness. It's not bleeding outside my non-existent lip line. Um, but I think it looks really nice and if you can find a shade that you like, I think this is very nice formula. I will say I don't think this is like a revolutionary lip formula. It's just a nice matte lip crayon if that's something that you're looking for. Also, if you are interested in if these have a smell, they smell just like a typical lipstick, maybe a tiny bit of floral in them. So this is the final look. I don't have any mascara or eye makeup on. I just want you to be able to see what the products look like all by themselves. I'm excited to see the brand branch out, maybe introduce some eye products, maybe a bronzer, a highlighter, maybe some eyeshadow. I think that would be awesome. But let's just do a recap really quick so you can just hear like a speed review of my thoughts on the products. We are zoomed back out. Let's do a little recap slash speed review on the products I have on my face. So first up, we have the concealers. I've let everything sit on my face for about 20 minutes at this point. It looks really good. Again, it is clinging to my dry patches, um, but I think if my skin is normal and not flaking off, I think they would look really good. It is a thicker consistency. If you can find an undertone that works for you, I think this looks really nice. Again, it doesn't dry down fully to a powder finish, so you would have to set it in areas that you crease, but I'm gonna keep playing around with them but off the bat, I am enjoying the formula. Next up, we have the lip and cheek color. This looks really nice on the skin. It is a thicker, balmy consistency, um, so it takes a little bit more time to blend out, but it does blend out well and it does layer well. It dries down a little bit, but not much. It still remains a little tacky on the skin. I think if you have very oily skin, I'm not sure if you're gonna be obsessed with this, but normal to dry skin, I think would enjoy this. Let's talk about the brushes. I think they are nice brushes, they are nice quality, but I don't think they are life-changing brushes. I like the concealer brush a little bit more than I like the blush brush. I like that the blush brush has an angle, but it is a little spiky and not that soft on the skin compared to the concealer brush. However, while using the concealer brush, I also had to go back in with a beauty sponge just because the concealer distributes so much product that this brush alone couldn't diffuse all of it into my skin. The brow gels. So I'm not obsessed with the tinted brow gel. I think the color is really good and it does hold down but it doesn't provide a crunchy finish. But because of the applicator being a little bit bigger and my brows not being just like naturally full, it's not the best for my personal brows. If you have fuller brows, I think they'd be great for that. However, I do really like the clear brow gel. It's not going to give you the hold SA Anastasia brow gel or even the Benefit 24 hour brow setter. It's not like crunchy and firm like that, but it does hold the brows in place. I also like the clear one for just any flyaways or like loose hairs that are around my face. Lastly, we have the matte lip colors. They are very comfortable on the lips. They don't feel thick or heavy at all. I don't think it's a revolutionary lip product, but it is very easy to use to line and fill it in your lips and it's very comfortable. If you find a color that you like and you like this format of like a crayon pencil, I think it is a good formula. I just don't think that is life changing. So with that being said, I think that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments below if you plan on picking up anything from Rose Inc. I think there's definitely some interesting products. I always love seeing new brands come on the market and Rose is truly a beauty icon. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to stick around. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will talk to you next time. Bye!